Welcome, Bent Riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon, and you're watching the Laid Back Bike Report. We're coming to you live from Pickerington, Ohio, and the Laid Back Bike Studios, where we produce this monthly webcast uh, that can be watched live, like many of you are doing right now, or later on YouTube. I hope you won't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notifications and know when we go live with our shows. If you look down the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a little red subscribe button. Please hit that and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a little white eye, and that's an information link. So if you click that, it'll take you basically to our website, and you'll be able to find out much more about the Laid Back Bike Report. We'll talk a little bit more about what's on that later on in the show. We hope you will uh, join us in uh, the live chat of this broadcast. Uh, we've uh, developed a real nice uh, live chatting community uh, with lots of you showing up, talking amongst each other to our panelists and asking our guests, uh, making comments, asking guests questions. So we really appreciate that. It makes the show a lot more fun if we have the live chat going. So uh, if you're on, um, if you're on the YouTube channel, uh, YouTube page, I should say, and if you look to your right, you'll see a live chat window. You can just type in the bottom of that, and you'll get your uh, comments up. We'll take a look at them and, uh, and bring them to our guests, or our panelists may respond. Uh, if you're on mobile, uh, some of you are a tablet or, or a phone. I think uh, you'll find it below. You might have to hit a little arrow button to, to drop down in there, but you should have a live chat button there as well. So please avail yourself of that. We would love to hear from you. All right. Oh, and if you happen to be uh, on uh, Facebook or Bent Rider or Twitter and you're, you're watching this show, uh, you can watch it there, but you won't be able to live chat. So click through onto the YouTube uh, link. You'll see a little icon at the bottom of the window there. Click through to YouTube, and then you'll be able to find that chat. So that's kind of important. So what is coming up? What do we have for you today on the show? Well, we have a very special guest. Uh, C.G. Rasmussen is with us today. We will introduce him in a minute. Uh, Brian Nabal is with us, of course, uh, and uh, he will have from the Laidback News Desk uh, a little look at the Avenue uh, trike. So uh, we're looking forward to, to seeing what Brian's got to say about that. Uh, Denny has an interesting uh, sports report today. He uh, participated in crewing on RAM this year, and uh, he's going to talk to us about the results of RAM. A lot went on with the recumbent uh, bikes uh, in RAM, and he'll tell you all about it. So we'll have a little wrap-up of RAM uh, later on in the sports report. Of course, we're going to uh, talk a little bit of uh, Google Plus uh, recumbent bike rider community business. We'll catch up with that and take a look at the contest winners for the posts of the month uh, towards the end of the show, and we'll talk about what's coming up later on. So, Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about who we have with us today. Uh, first of all, Denny, if you want to put yourself on, we have Denny Voorhees from Sarah, Pennsylvania. He's our laid-back sports desk anchor. There you go. And he's also doing the directing today. So, Denny, how you doing? Glad to have you with us. Fabulous. Doing great, Gary. Another, uh, another Sunday afternoon. Looks good. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Denny. And uh, then from Rochester, New York, the founder and editor of Bent Rider and the anchor of the Laid Back News Desk, of course, it's Brian Ball. Hey, Brian. Hey, good, good to be on. It's always great to have you. Brian's helping out uh, with the slideshow today, as he's been doing lately. Really appreciate your help, Brian. Thanks. No problem. All right. Now we're going to go to uh, Bonn, Germany. And uh, this is a, uh, a panelist that we've had on on occasion before. Always a joy to have him on. He will be leading the Three Wheels for France Velomobile Tour next week. I think we have a slide of that. Brian, you want to pop that on and we'll take a look. And Joseph, um, I think uh, we'll come back to you a little bit later on. But if you want to take a minute, just real quick, and tell us, um, Brian, can you, are you working on getting that? There we go. And uh, Danny, go ahead and hit that because I want to show everybody his Quattro Velo with the little there we go. Yeah, just go ahead and tell us what uh, what's coming up yeah. next week. <clears throat> Thanks, Gary. It's another another week to go. Next Sunday, um, we will already have left uh, from Trier in Germany to Verdun in France. So we're doing like the Tour de France. We're doing a three week tour with three and a half thousand kilometers. Um, maybe not as much climbing, but uh, certainly multiple the fun of the tour. Very very nice, and that's that's exciting. I know you. 
you work very hard on these things, uh, Joseph, and uh, they're they're so well appreciated. You you know you do so much for the Velomobile community, including being on our Velomobile show. So thanks again for being here. We'll we'll uh, we will include you in the conversation a little bit later on. All right, uh, now to Doug Davis uh, from uh, Dallas, Texas. Doug is also a uh, a returning uh, panelist. Uh, he owns more Velomobiles than anyone I know. We've got a shot. There's, <laughs> there's Doug. Say hello, Doug. Hey, Gary. And, yeah, I uh, think I have the largest collection of Velomobiles in North America now, for sure. I think so. And and you've got some competitions. Uh, can we, uh, yeah, uh, if you can, Denny, can you hit that picture so people can just get a look, a small slice of, of his Velomobile <laughs> connection. Can you get, there we go. And we got that one, and then I think we got one more lined up. Yeah, that is amazing to me. So, uh, Doug, if, again, if we have a little bit more time, we'll come back later on, and we'll talk about uh, what the latest is uh, in that collection and much, what you've got up your sleeve, too. So thanks for, be thanks for being with us. You bet. Okay. Uh, let me go on at this point. Uh, Denny, if you come on back to me, I'm going to talk to you about our special guest today. Considered by many to be the father of the modern Velomobile, our guest developed a fair trike in the early 1970s. This was partially in response to the gasoline shortage of that era, when commuters were beginning to take a serious look at alternative transportation options. His new vehicle was dubbed the Lytra, and it continues to be manufactured to this day. He is a sought after lecturer on the history of the Velomobile, so we are very honored to have him with us today. Bent Riders from Copenhagen, Denmark, I'm very happy to introduce to you Carl Georg Rasmussen. Hello, Carl. Hello, Gary. Can you get Carl on the screen there? There we go. Okay. Hey, it's so nice to have you with us. And uh, I know you did you did a little uh, Velomobile riding to get to where you are right now and uh, had a little difficulty with a flat tire, I understand, too. Yes, uh, I was lucky to have a flat on the way to here. Uh, it's about 30 kilometers I have to ride okay. to, to Jim's place here. We have a nice view of Copenhagen from his apartment. And uh, it's in the seventh store. And uh, we are looking at the sunset um, tonight. All right, that's right, because it's, uh, what, 8 or 8.30 there now. So very nice. Well, we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about your riding. I want to get into that a little bit, too. But first uh, today, uh, I'd like to, if we can, start with uh, a little presentation that I know you've, uh, you've given all, all around the world in various places about the history of the Velomobile. We've got a nice slideshow here. So, um, Denny, if you can go ahead and hit the first slide, and uh, Carl... Uh, when you want to go on to the next slide, if you can see it okay, hopefully it'll be up in a second there. Can you see that okay, Carl? Yes, yes. All right, so if you go ahead with your presentation and just say next slide, when you, or just next, and, uh, and, and Brian will go ahead and, and advance that for you. So you go ahead. Okay, yes, this is from a PowerPoint presentation in Austria um, in uh, 2015 in the town uh, Dornbien. And it was the eighth uh, seminar in a series of seminars. Uh, we started these seminars already in uh, 1993 uh, in Copenhagen. And uh, since then, it has shifted between uh, Denmark and uh, Germany and uh, Switzerland. And uh, in the last uh, was in Holland. Uh, and uh, Austria. Um, so let's, uh, you can see the front uh, uh, photos that is of the famous uh, Vector from America, uh, which broke all speed records uh, at his time. Uh, and the other one, the left one is a replica of the Moucher, the uh, French a Velomobile from the 1980, uh, 1920s and 30s. Um, this is a Swedish uh, replica. So let's uh, look at the next. Yes, this is just an overview of my presentation. 
um, I tried to uh, to consider uh, the 2000 in, in different uh, periods of the 25 years. The first I, um, I mentioned is the pioneer uh, time. Um, and up, and it included also the Second World War, uh, but we will, we will see later uh, examples. Uh, then uh, the uh, from fifty to seventy five, um, more and more of these vehicles got motor in them, and uh, we saw the uh, the scooter scooter cars, uh, which uh, are very close to also to. Uh, uh, wheelmobiles, but they had no pedals. Uh, then there came the period with the two crises, uh, oil crisis in uh, 73 and in 78. Uh, it was great fun for us uh, bicycle riders. We could ride on Sundays on the motorways because it was forbidden for cars to ride. Uh, we had to uh, to save uh, gasoline at that time. Um, so let's take the next picture. Next picture, please. Next slide. Shall next, I? No. Next slide, please. Yeah. Hello. So from, from the year 2000, uh, it really uh, took off the development of automobiles. Uh, <clears throat> the first period uh, was in the, before the first, uh, uh, before the Second World War, um, and in Scandinavia, Sweden was uh, um, the dominating uh, country for automobiles at that time. Um, they published uh, blueprints and instructions how to build it, and uh, they were sold many instructions but uh, very few were built actually uh, but there were three or four uh, models on the market at that time um, if you see the the one in the upper right uh, that is a so-called pilot which i built when i was a teenager next uh, picture please uh, they were organized uh, races in Sweden, um, and uh, there was a, a big audience for these uh, races. Um, uh, it, they took place um, mostly from 1930 to uh, 1945. Uh, next. Uh, yes, here is a little more details about... Uh, the, the, the Swedish design uh, pilot. Uh, I built it uh, in uh, after the Second World War as a teenager, and it was uh, it was made of wood, um, plywood, thin plywood, three millimeter uh, plywood, and uh, the shell itself only of uh, one millimeter or one point five millimeter plywood. Uh, next, uh, please. It was uh, a nice uh, drop uh, form, uh, aerodynamical. Um, also, the Germans uh, started to develop automobiles after the Second World War. Uh, you know, Messerschmitt uh, was not allowed to build um, aircrafts after the Second World War, so they had to find other products to produce. And uh, they uh, collaborated with uh, an inventor, Fritz Fentz, who had designed the first uh, automobile uh, in, uh, I think it was in aluminium uh, sheets. Well, you can see it on the upper right. Uh, later on, uh, the uh, Messerschmitt factory developed the uh, Kabinen, uh, Messerschmitt Kabinen roller, uh, it was called in in German, and um, I I don't know the number uh, produced, but they it was very popular in the nineteen uh, fifties. Uh, they you could say two two persons. Next, uh, please. 
Yes. Um, so uh, in the period from about 1950 up to 1975, um, people wanted motor in, in the light vehicles. So that's a, a period uh, which was uh, um, good for, motor, for um, scooters and scooter cars. And uh, there were also a few um, with pedal power, but uh, uh, I think the, uh, it was in England and in America. We saw two examples here. Um, the pity car uh, was a rather heavy vehicle with pedals. Uh, so um, it, it was not uh, so popular because of it, it, it was too heavy. Um, in England, they had a competition how to make um, a weatherproof uh, bicycle. Um, the winner was a two-wheeler with, with a fairing as shown here on the picture. Next, uh, please. But then, after the or first oil crisis, people began, uh, started to, to discuss uh, limits to growth and uh, how we could make uh, life more sustainable, um, how we could save energy and all these uh, subjects. And um, in, in the bicycle uh, world, um, there was started a lot of uh, competition and they were all speed competitions. Um, there was a new organization formed in America, International Human Powered Vehicle Association in the middle of the 70s. And uh, that's also the time where we, we saw the vector. Um, and um, in Europe, um, the uh, vector uh, was uh, not copied, but further developed. And uh, they took several, several records, were speed records in this time. Um, already uh, in before the year 2000, the speed record uh, reached uh, 133 kilometers per hour. We now know that uh, it has been uh, improving since, and now they, it's around 140 kilometers per hour. Uh, let's have the next picture. Yes, um, also in other European countries, <clears throat> the interest for billobiles uh, grew in this time. Uh, for instance, here in uh, Lithuania, um, one of the first uh, authors of uh, of a book uh, on billobiles was uh, a, a Lithuanian. Um, and uh, here is uh, an example from Vilnius, from a comp competition in Vilnius. And that was in the beginning of the 1980s. Uh, next, please. Uh, here are other exam very early examples. Uh, they were very nice uh, styling. Um, Kalkov um, made a, a competition and uh, the one you see on the left uh, was made as also as a, a tandem. Um, a very long vehicle, but uh, it was only made in uh, very few um, example uh, very few few uh, models uh, the upper one is uh, uh, um, from Netherlands from Gazelle and uh, also this was not made in in many uh, <clears throat> numbers uh, you can see that it's characteristic at this time to, to build the canopy as a big uh, um, uh, transparent uh, window 
it it is uh, it's not uh, very uh, safe uh, in rain and uh, in dark because um, the light uh, is the, uh, what you call it. Um, um, Yes, you cannot it see it from the. It disperses over the over the glasses. That would yes, be. exactly. That's one. Uh, yes, uh, so you see uh, you see almost nothing but a lot of stars in in the shell. Um, you will see later that that uh, now it's not used uh, this kind of design uh, anymore. And next uh, next picture, please. Um, in the 1980, I started to uh, to build uh, Bilobil, which I wanted to, to be more practical. Uh, I was not hunting uh, speed records, but I wanted to get uh, dry uh, to work uh, and uh, to make long tours. Also, when the weather was not optimal, and uh, uh, that's why I built it as a, a trike, first a trike, and then uh, built the uh, fairing on the trike because then I could vary it uh, for different purposes. I could also change the size uh, for different persons. So I made three different sizes. Uh, we also uh, made tours uh, in Germany and Switzerland, uh, Austria, uh, during this time. Uh, I did the Paris Press Paris in uh, 1987. And it was the first time they saw a Velobile in the Paris Press Paris. Uh, next, please. Yes, um, in England, uh, they also formed the uh, Human Power uh, Vehicle Association. And they organized a festival in Thamesmith in 1984. And um, I wanted to, to participate, of course. Um, I rented the small aircraft. Uh, uh, the lighter could be disassembled, so I could put it into uh, uh, Cherokee and uh, started from Copenhagen and landed south of London in a small airfield called uh, Biggin Hill. It was one of the famous uh, airfields uh, in the Battle of uh, Britain. And uh, I assembled the Lytra again and rode to to uh, to uh, London to the festival. And you flew the airplane, right? Excuse me. You flew the airplane, right? Yes, I I I am I'm a pilot also. Yes. Next. And in the Thames I for the first time I saw the Winchester. So it's also one of the early Velobiles. Uh, it was made more for speed. And uh, it became very popular and uh, is still sold, uh, still produced and sold in UK. Um, Mike Burroughs uh, made a, a fairing. So this is also a trike with a fairing which can be exchanged for different purposes. So he made several um, models um, for speed and for maybe more practical use. Uh, next, please. Yes, uh, I just mentioned the the book uh, about the Velobils uh, made by Duvedenas, a professor in Lithuania. Um, but, the, but the very first book was in Russia and uh, it was uh, written by Popolov. They had uh, very fine illustrations. They had uh, artists uh, which uh, inter illustrated it very nicely and uh, very futuristic. Uh, next, please. Yes, um, 
in the 80s, we organized the do-it-yourself um, uh, course in Switzerland. Um, it was the new club, Future Bike, uh, CH. Um, and um, I brought five uh, Lytra fairings and uh, trikes to, to Switzerland. And in three days, we built them together and uh, made a tour together. Next, please. Next picture, please. Okay, don't give up on Brian. He's probably sometimes he has trouble. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is just an example uh, from UK. Um, it was um, a lady in South England who wanted uh, a velo bill, um, but uh, under one condition that she could always take her her dog with her. So I had to build a special uh, a cabin for the dog uh, as the, the rare fairing. And uh, I rode it myself from Copenhagen to, uh, to Southampton, um, took the ferry from Esberg to Harwich, and then uh, rode it through South England. It's a hilly area, South England, and uh, it was a nice, nice ride. Next, please. In uh, in Germany, um, I, I I think I found most customers for automobiles. In Denmark, uh, it was not uh, it's more not, not considered as um, an interesting thing. Um, very few knew what a automobile was. But uh, thanks to uh, the HPV Germany, the club in Germany, uh, uh, it was, um, we came, came in the press, we came in the television, and in, in this way, uh, more Germans knew about Billmobiles uh, earlier. So uh, I sold a few, um, all for practical use. Um, uh, here is an example of a dentist in uh, Aachen. He could write with uh, to the kindergarten uh, and to the school, also in the winter time. Uh, next, please. And uh, when uh, when the kid uh, grew up, um, this is a Swedish a boy. Uh, he couldn't sit in the rear fairing any longer. It, it is possible up to about an age of three, three and a half year. But here he got his own uh, trailer and uh, he communicated with his father through a tube, a plastic tube with two funnels. No electricity was necessary. Um, next, please. Uh, here are some uh, individual um, examples, but uh, I think the most interesting is the one with the solar panel. Uh, the owner of this uh, Billonville uh, was sponsored by a bank in Switzerland. I think the bank paid about three, three uh, uh, yeah, about 75% of, of the price for the whole vehicle. And later on, he uh, made advertisement for the solar panel. He, he got one for free just to show how it could be used on the fairing. So he could uh, remove the, the, uh, the panel and roll it uh, uh, and put it in, inside inside. So next, please. Yes, it's just to uh, to show you examples of uh, this series of uh, Milmobile seminars, which started in Copenhagen in 1993. Uh, I thought it would be good to have a forum where we could uh, exchange experience and ideas. So. Um, 
uh, we have now been been able to organize in in total eight uh, seminars. Um, maybe the the ninth will be in UK, um, but the first uh, and and uh, the first day eight have been in Denmark, in uh, Germany, in Austria, and Switzerland, and in the Netherlands. Uh, by the way, um, we uh, we have a very uh, good um, uh, member of uh, the group in England, Simon Bailey. He has uh, organized the digitalization of the all seminar proceedings. So now, now they are uh, available on the, in, on the internet, uh, all volumes. So uh, thanks, Carl. To I, I think I saw that somewhere. If uh, please don't forget to send me that link. And then I'll put that in the video uh, description too, so yeah, people yeah, can, yeah, can yeah. find that. That's yes. yeah, that's quite a sight. So sorry to yeah. interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so next, please. Yeah, um, we took part in some uh, events in England, and uh, here is just a, a group tour uh, where we stopped. Uh, in Edinburgh and in uh, Cambridge, um, we were riding nine together. It was great fun. But um, I must say, in England, the uh, the roads uh, are rather narrow and winding. So uh, we couldn't ride in in a long row. We had to split up in small groups of three, so that the cars could get. Uh, space to overtake us. Uh, next, please. Yes, in the example of uh, British design, um, King Seidel made this very nice uh, millmobile. It was, um, it had a special transmission, uh, not a, a normal um, uh, crank. Um, so that uh, they could fit it into the nose of, of the uh, billmobile. It was um, very small. Next. And then uh, the first uh, billmobile from, uh, from the dust side was a flavor bike uh, in, uh, made of aluminum. Uh, it was also made as a, a do-it-yourself kit, uh, so you uh, you got a, a number of sheets of um, aluminium, and uh, um, um, you got uh, rivets and and uh, what you needed to to build it. Um, several hundred uh, were built by by do-it-yourself people. Uh, next, please. And uh, another German example is the cab bike by uh, Reinhold Schwimmer and, and German Eslava. Um, we were writing tours together. Um, it was uh, um, uh, another kind of design where you open uh, the canopy um, on a, along a, he a hinge. Uh, on the lower um, part of the picture here, you see the go on, uh, which was a very nice uh, design from Goetzky. Uh, here, unfortunately, he chose this kind of uh, windscreen. Where you don't see anything in when you have the sun against you, if you have car lights against you, if you have rain and all this. So, but uh, on a nice dry, sun sunny Sunday, you you, you it, it looks nice. Next, please. So this is just a 
picked her from a stop on a tour to Switzerland, where we have the cab bike and we have a few lighters uh, with us. Uh, next, please. Yeah, um, I got uh, inquiries from uh, some German doctors. Um, you know, pe people are getting uh, uh, fatter and fatter, and uh, the doctors uh, try to tell them that they should do more exercise. Um, and uh, a, go a good way to, um, to promote it was to come in a velomobile because then they demonstrated that they really used uh, the pedals uh, for powering the vehicle. And uh, the man in the middle here, he lost five kilograms uh, on the first uh, three months he used it. He, he simply visited his uh, patient um, uh, in, in a light cell where he could put his uh, doctor's bag uh, in the rear fairing. Uh, next, please. And uh, a number of artists have been using Willowbills. Um, the other one, it was an arty, uh, a Danish uh, fairy island uh, that artist. He is a painter and uh, a musician. And uh, he bought a light and rode uh, through the Faroe Islands, through Iceland, through Norway, Sweden, Finland, to Petersburg, then through the Baltic countries and, uh, and back through Sweden to Denmark. And after that, he sold his light to the uh, Art Museum in Copenhagen. But uh, it was a, a tough guy, uh, and he uh, he sponsors, sponsored his tour by uh, playing uh, on the tour, making performance on the tour. Example is uh, uh, Tobias Enke. Uh, he was uh, uh, running a, a, a whole uh, group of billobiles uh, with um, advertisement on for different companies. Uh, he lived for a whole year in his, in, in his Lytra, traveling from town to town. And um, he made uh, figures from uh, metal, um, from silver, silver dart. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Um, so next, please. Just to show that uh, all wheelmobiles are not uh, three or four wheelers, but they can also be two wheelers. But uh, very few uh, practical wheelmobiles have been on, on two wheels. Uh, it was mainly to get a high speed that they built uh, fairings on, on low rider uh, two wheelers. But uh, there are two examples here on uh, the lower part of the picture um, from uh, Stefan Gloger. Uh, he is now working for uh, uh, Opel, making uh, lightweight uh, cabins for, for cars. Uh, and Joachim Fuchs, he also made a two-wheeler with fairing, a very nice one. but. Uh, I think it's only made in, in one example. Uh, next, please. And from the, uh, about the, uh, the year 2000, it, it really uh, started uh, with development of wheelmobiles in, in many countries. Um, first of all, in, in uh, Holland and in, 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 um, in Germany. <clears throat> And you see here, you uh, now well-known models like the Mango and the Quest and the Strata from uh, Billobil NL and uh, from uh, Flavor Bike, uh, you know, the Orca. Um, and they are sold in quite a high number now. They're very popular. 
next uh, please Oh yeah, just to show uh, uh, that uh, a growing uh, literature on billow wheels and on recumbent bikes and speed bikes. Uh, Andreas Polk has pu published uh, several books uh, and uh, they are giving uh, the scientific background for the shape of these vehicles. Please. Yes, uh, more models from Germany. Um, we have the Leiber. Uh, uh, two uh, models of the Leiber, the Extreme and uh, the, this is the, fir the first version. Uh, you can see here, um, the canopy is now very small. Uh, you have it close to the eyes. So uh, even in um, in bad weather, when you get rain on, you can still see through the windscreen. And here, the Milan, uh, a very low um, billmobile. You can see the, there's a big stone here. You should be very careful to run over it. But uh, it it is uh, it's strong in. Uh, in speed competition. Next, uh, please. And here, another a German producer. Uh, here they uh, will go on Evo. And uh, the, uh, an, another further development, um, DF and what you see to the right is uh, um, the cab bike uh, in uh, an American version. I uh, took this picture in uh, Minneapolis uh, in 2003 when I participated in the, in the race in America. Uh, next, please. Yes, um, so back to motorization, yes. Um, I think um, we will see now stronger and stronger development uh, uh, in the direction of motorized wheelmobiles. Uh, I think also it's the best alternative to an electric car. Uh, it's just much, much uh, cheaper, much uh, lighter, uh, and in, in the town, it is just as fast as an uh, electric uh, car. This um, is a Dutch example. Uh, and, and we can go on. Yes, um, uh, here um, you can maybe better see how the elytra is made as a trike where you put a uh, rear fairing and the front fairing. Uh, you can take it off. And uh, uh, also uh, the, the reason why I could take it along in a small aircraft, I could disassemble it uh, this way. Um, so now I have also fitted uh, some Lytras uh, with electric motors, the same uh, with the elevator, uh, Accurat, the company Accurat in Germany, uh, is specialist in um, fitting uh, electric motors in uh, billmobiles, uh, in particular in elevator and uh, uh, also other models. Next, please. Yes, this is just to uh, show uh, examples of uh, do-it-yourself uh, designs. Um, they are up, up to the left is a nylon. Uh, uh, it's very thin, very light. And of course, it is enough to uh, get protection against the, the rain. Uh, 
to the right, you, you can see the, the Marvel uh, model from Harald Winkler. It's extremely light. Uh, at, uh, at one of our seminars, Bill uh, Bill design seminars, he just uh, took it and lifted it up over his head. Uh, and uh, he, I think he has got the weight down to maybe 12 kilograms or something. Uh, the two other examples are also uh, do-it-yourself designs, a French one and a Dutch one. The French um, uh, was uh, demonstrated at Spacey uh, two, three years ago. It's extremely light, also very thin um, uh, canvas, and and uh, um, and you can see you can see the structure through through the cover. Uh, Nick, please. Next picture, please. Wake up, Brian. Yeah, Brian's not sleeping. I'm sure he sometimes has problems. There we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Um, I, I have had many uh, designers uh, as visitors, as uh, trainees uh, in, in Copenhagen in the, my, my workshop. Already when I started, uh, people came with their blueprints and asked me to uh, to build their vehicle. But I told them that no, you have to do it yourself because uh, yeah, you have to learn about the problems. Uh, also, uh, to to uh, design a, a model which can be produced, uh, and you can only get this experience if you try it to yourself. Uh, it's it's fun to design wheels, uh, but it is, seems to be less than fun to produce them. And uh, when it comes really to <coughs> reality, so you see many many drawings, but very uh, fewer uh, examples of really realized vehicles. I've had um, uh, people from. Uh, engineering schools in France, in Austria, in Germany, coming uh, for their internship uh, three, four months uh, to learn how to laminate, and uh, uh, it has given me given me many uh, wonderful contacts in Europe. Some of them got uh, a grant from Erasmus in uh, in Brussels. And some of them also started their own company when they went back to their own country. Next, please. Yes. Um, in the small town where I live, we have five fitness centers. Yes. Do believe it. Uh, five fitness, uh, and every day I write, uh, I pass this uh, fitness center. I see maybe fifty cars parked in front of it. So that's uh, the way people uh, um, uh, live. They take their car to the fitness center. They park it there. They sit on the bike, sweating for an hour. And then they go back to their car and ride five to ten kilometers home again. Why don't they take a bicycle instead? They could also save a lot of money in the fitness center if they used the wheelmobile. So people are aware of the need for exercise. Uh, that they want to train themselves physically, but they want to do it in their way, riding with the car to the fitness center and back again. Thank you. That was my last Carl, picture. thank you so much. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Denny, you want to come on back to me for a second, if you would? And uh, Denny might have, there we go. Uh, Carl, what an amazing presentation, so informative. You know, 
if, if I'm honest, I'm a little selfish here because I, I believe this is the presentation you might have given at, at Spetsy or maybe just a previous one, but I was too busy to get to it uh, going around interviewing everybody. So now I've had a chance to watch you do it and, okay. and I'm so glad that I did. Um, now, uh, guys, uh, let's see, the panelists uh, uh, that are with us, I'm going to start with them. Uh, I think this might be a good time. I'm guessing uh, Doug and Joseph, you may have a couple questions uh, for Carl. Uh, if you want to unmute yourself and and go ahead with those, and uh, Denny, just uh, whoever starts first, you can go ahead and hit them. Do you have questions, guys? Go ahead, Doug. Uh, I'm gonna, I was going to let you go first. I'm just absolutely in awe of the whole history here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just stunning to think about all the things that uh, that have happened, and you know, I'm you, you know just just really an amazing history of all these. And you know, I, I think I could spend you know like a day sitting there talking to you about every one of these slides. Um, I, I would ask, I guess, probably everybody's going to be interested in this, but, you know, what, tell us, tell I mean, you've got such wonderful stories. Um, what really stands out in the last, you know, maybe 10 to 15 years of development, I mean, that has changed from in, in, in t over time. I mean, we've seen so much here, but I'd love your perspective on it. To, what know. has changed? Well, what what what's your perspective on what has changed in the last 10, 15 years? Well, um, yeah, uh, I think um, we have we have seen more and more models um, because uh, uh, designers they find it fun to design, um, and uh, therefore. You, you see also many uh, copies of uh, other models as modifications. So do-it-yourself, the do-it-to-yourself movement, I think, will be even stronger in the future. Today, you can buy everything on the internet. You can buy the uh, uh, you, instructions also of how to laminate, uh, how to, uh, to build a fairing with... Uh, uh, vacuum uh, techniques and so on. So the, te the technology you can read on the on the uh, internet. You can buy all the uh, components on the internet. Uh, you can buy motors, uh, middle models. So uh, uh, I think uh, the future will see more uh, do-it-yourself designers. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, Carl, uh, if I can uh, come in on this, I, I think that's a good point that the future will see more designers. Now, I happen to think uh, that it will also see, you know, more technology applied. You know, when you, when you look at your own uh, presentation there, you cover a good 20 years you know, mm -hmm. with, with, you know, some early history. But uh, uh, looking at the models, you know, the, the, the thing that you started with Elytra, that is a good 20, 25 years we're looking at. Let's imagine another 20 years forward. You know, probably we will see at least as much development, as much change, as mm -hmm. much innovation that we have mm -hmm. seen over the past 25 years in the next 25 years. And probably that will go into components. You know, think of most of the velomobiles today use the McPherson struts from, um, from that velomobile uh, cells. Uh, that is almost an industry standard uh, with development. But, you know, in terms of, of, the, of the technology involved in this, it is still a very simple stage. You know, lots of people are fiddling with it. So I would expect that, uh, as you say, we will see more velomobiles with, with electric assist. We will see more technology applied. We will see probably more innovation in, in composite materials so that we will have uh, shells that are lighter than the ones today, but they are stiffer. You know, in case of an accident, they don't, they don't crash in the way that uh, they used to do or can hurt you in the way that they used to do. You know? What's your view on this after, um, you know, after all, you're the pioneer of all this. Well, um, 
I, uh, I have a customer in uh, Denmark. Uh, he is a specialist in uh, 3D uh, printing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am very impressed of what he can make uh, in many different materials. Uh, what, what, what I have been uh, making with simple tools, he can now make uh, in, in 3D uh, printing. Uh, he is using different kinds of plastic, and he can also print in, in metal. Uh, so many uh, complicated, we can now uh, permit ourselves to make uh, more complicated uh, components um, uh, because we have these new technologies. That's what I was going to say, is having talked to a lot of the Velmobile manufacturers, is that a lot of them have said, this is stuff we wanted to make for years, but now we can. Now we yeah. have the ability to do it at a reasonable cost. And I was going to say something about the 3D printing too. Like I think that's the whole bike industry is just going to be revolutionized by that, like most industries will be. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, you know, uh, the, the other thing that occurs to me uh, while we have Joseph here, too, uh, and one of the things that, uh, that Carl, you talked about were a couple of uh, Velomobile tours that were put together a number of years ago. And now we, we mentioned briefly at the top of the show about Joseph having put together a couple. I wonder if you guys could chat for just a minute about maybe what the attraction is about uh, group riding uh, on, on a tour with Velomobiles and maybe uh, how things have changed over the years in, in terms of uh, uh, putting together a group tour of Velomobiles. Uh, Joseph, maybe you could start and then over to, uh, to Carl. Uh, yes, uh, thanks, Gary. I'm happy to start on this one because actually uh, Carl was a source of in inspiration. You know, when I got into Velomobiles, I've been reading these reports about the amazing uh, tours that he was doing. Oh, and so I thought there must be something to it uh, that goes even beyond recumbent riding, that goes beyond trike riding. Um, and I found that that uh, you know in the in the practical world, if you if you really wanted to demonstrate to people uh, that a human beings have enormous potential, and b that these particular vehicles uh, are the best extension to human power on land that that exists, then you tell people about tours. You know, you tell them about the daily legs that you could do. You tell them about the differences that you cover. You know, and, uh, and Carl, uh, essentially, I think more, uh, well, maybe not more, but, but equal to his uh, fame as a uh, Velomobile builder is his fame as a tourer. You know, as somebody that even, even at an advanced age would do enormous legs, and uh, it wouldn't show. You know, he would show up... Uh, uh, on, on, a, on a day somewhere and tell you where he came from. So, and I thought, uh, um, this is probably something that you need to show to people. And, and one of the best ways to show Velomobiles to people uh, is actually to do tours, is actually to cover a lot of ground and to meet people and speak with them. Um, and, uh, you know, I personally had another motivation that was, you know, I was, I was a bike commuter. Um, and a Velomobile rider, and I was always on my own. You know, you had to make an appointment if you wanted to meet another Velomobile rider. And so I thought, what greater thing would there be than to do tours together? And there were these tours. Uh, uh, Carl had mentioned the uh, uh, cab bike people. The cab bike people used to organize the Gießen Velomobile meeting. Um, and then there was the, the uh, Holland Express. Now, there was always a group of people from the Netherlands uh, uh, riding to Gießen to attend, uh, which then, you know, uh, uh, became the talk uh, in the community. And then there were the first videos coming up. And, and I think that sparked a lot of interest. And, and I think uh, uh, I, I myself uh, um, uh, made myself a name uh, when I said, well, uh, if, if, if we do a Velomobile tour, why not one of those grand tours? Uh, and uh, after touring uh, a lot in Germany, I said, let's, let's do America. Let's do coast to coast in the United States and let's do it in four weeks. You know, in order to demonstrate that the prejudice that people had who knew about Velomobiles, that they are for flatlands and a lot of wind. You know, that's what a Velomobile is good for. But just to demonstrate them, we will cover the entire United States where you get all sorts of terrain. And you've got this brutal heat, you've got winds, you've got mountains, you know, you've got distances. 
And if you can do this, then you can do just about anything with a Velomobile. And that was Roll Across America from uh, right. that's, 2011, that's right. was that 2011. right? 2011, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you which, know, to, to, be, to be fair, Gary, uh, you know, Alert and, and uh, I think uh, uh, Jimte, but uh, maybe somebody else, they had in their elevator, they had crossed the Alps before. You know? It is not that we were the first actually to demonstrate that Velomobiles can do all this, but we, we demonstrated it on a scale that you couldn't overlook. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Carl, I'd really love to get your reaction to this. So tell me about what it was like setting up the, uh, the Velomobile tours in, in the early days that became such an inspiration to, to folks uh, like Joseph. Well, it, it also has uh, limitations when you are riding in a big group. Uh, I mentioned that in England, with the winding uh, streets um, and uh, uh, the cars cannot overtake uh, a long uh, line of automobiles. So you have to split up in smaller groups. For instance, we did it in, in three and three uh, so that the cars could overtake us. Another thing is that uh, a group is never uh, faster than the slowest. Um, so you have to wait for, for, for the slowest. Um, we solved the problem put, uh, in, in uh, this way, that we say, uh, for lunch we stop here uh, in this town, and uh, uh, in for, for supper uh, we start in another town. Uh, and we meet at uh, maybe six o'clock in the afternoon. So we had certain points and times where we meet, but otherwise, uh, the group was split up in maybe two or three together. Uh, that's a, in this way, it, it works better. Very good. Okay. Uh, we could go on with probably this line of questioning for hours, but we have to move along here. And I have more questions that have been submitted and some on live chat. So let's get to those if we can. First of all, uh, one of our, um, one of our uh, panelists that, uh, that usually hops on with us with Velmobiles is Luke Fournier. He is uh, from Montreal and he uh, has uh, a blog called the Velomobile Observer, which you, probably, which you guys I'm sure are probably uh, aware of. And he sent me a Facebook message. He couldn't be with us today, um, but he wanted to address this to you, uh, Carl. It would be interesting to hear if you think that the market for Velomobiles is expanding, staying the same, or contracting. I understand that the Lytra is still being sold, but the rate has diminished. Where is Lytra going from here? I would like to know how many have been produced over the years and, and what, what kind of current production numbers are you having? So kind of uh, direct questions, but uh, whatever you feel like answering, uh, Carl. Yeah, I, I think the market is, is expanding. Uh, with more and more producers, producers. Um, that that's also, uh, I think, uh, what we wish. We want to see more different models for different purposes. Uh, you cannot cover every uh, um, every need with with one model. So uh, that's what we have seen: an expanding uh, number of models, and and the market is expanding with them. Uh, it's not uh, expanding fast, but still uh, we are talking about uh, uh, several hundreds, um, maybe about 500 in total per year. Uh, and I think that will grow in the future when we get uh, techniques to make it cheaper. I have noticed that in particular in the USA, uh, the price is very important. And uh, you want to keep the price around five thousand uh, dollars, or maybe even less. Um, it, it it gives, of course, uh, certain limitations uh, when you uh, when you uh, when you are so tough uh, in the price setting. But uh, otherwise, uh, a model like Elf. Um, I think uh, is um, has hit hit uh, the market uh, in this sector. Uh, it's not a fast. Uh, uh, it's not a fast automobile, but it's it's it looks like a practical automobile, and um, 
why shouldn't many people want to buy such a vehicle? Yeah, I actually had a comment from Park Talk 81 on the chat saying that the elf in, uh, in America is selling well. So that was his contribution. I have um, mostly now some, some of the other ones I just want to relay to you. These are kind of personal uh, messages from uh, uh, Laidback Back Report Facebook page uh, this morning. I got a message from Dale Hammerschmidt who says, we finally remember uh, Carl Georg from his visit to Minneapolis several years ago uh, and meetings in Copenhagen and Spetsy over the years. We send our greetings and that's from Dale Hammerschmidt. And then uh, Carl, let's see, I've got also towards the beginning of chat, boy, this was a while ago, uh, Dwight McKay. Uh, I'm just enjoying the podcast. Carl Georg uh, emailed me to let me know he's going to be on. And I want to tell you that I own Elytra, which is my daily commuter ride in cold weather. So he sends uh, his greetings from Lafayette, Indiana. And uh, Jay Falver. And he, is, and he motorized it. <laughs> he motorized it, speaking of electrification. Yes. Jay Falver, this is totally awesome. My great granddad was from Copenhagen. CG has the accent I remember from granddad, bringing back memory. So there you go. I guess that has nothing to do with velomobiles. <laughs> but, and then let's, uh, I want to see if there's something here at the end. I might have missed some of these later ones. Uh, panelists, you're doing a great job of answering some of the questions uh, that people are posing on there, so we don't have to worry about those. Um, okay. Um, Velo ads. I was wondering, Gary, if Carl could have any production velomobile as a present which model oh if you could have any velomobile at present which uh, which model would you choose carl that's a difficult <laughs> because, that's a good question first, though yeah first of all uh, for my personal use uh, i need a practical one i i am not hunting any speed record um so but uh I uh, I am working more and more to transport uh, bigger loads. Um, I have I have moved my workshop now uh, two times in five years, and every time I have been able to uh, move all my things on on uh, trailers. So I have I have built special special trailers which I can. Uh, hook on the Elytra. Um, so that, that's my need to, uh, to transport a lot of, of luggage and uh, uh, other people will have other needs. Um, well, let's face it, you, you built the Elytra really for, your, for what you thought would be the best possible Velomobile at the time. And I guess whatever changes have been made are those that you thought were appropriate. So of course, that would be the one that you would you would choose, and you yes. continue and you continue not only to talk the talk, but what ride the ride. I guess you would say you were yes. the end of your presentation talking about people uh, going to uh, uh, to places where they can exercise, uh, the gym, all that stuff when they could just ride a bike and get great exercise, fresh air, and all the things that mm -hmm. you do. And uh, yes, you ride the ride because. You, you ride, I guess I would ask you, let's go ahead and get into the interview because we got to move along here anyways. I'm going to have to cut out some of my questions as it is. But mm -hmm. so uh, tell me about uh, how far you ride every year. Where are some of the places that you have ridden uh, uh, on, on, on a daily basis? How far do you ride? On a daily, uh, I guess I, in average, I ride between 50 and 100. Uh, per day uh, during the year, and uh, I well, I think uh, the, I measured several times uh, about fourteen thousand per year, but now I cut it down to maybe eight thousand per year. Yeah, that that's embarrassing, I'm sure for you, well, but uh, it's something that that I most have, of us would aspire to. Remember, remember, I am completely dependent on my automobile. You do not I have, have another. I you don't no, have a car. I've not. I've had no car for thirty years. Ah, right. And let's get this out of the way, Carl. How can you tell us how old you are? Uh, I'm only eighty-two. Eighty-two years old. A very obviously yeah. a very spry young uh, <laughs> eighty-two years old. That's just incredible. All right, let's let's get uh, a few personal questions out of the way. Can you 
tell us uh, about uh, where you grew up. Have you always been from Copenhagen? What's what's your early life story? My, uh, I, I where, don't think where did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Well, I did grew up. I grew up on the island Schellen, where also Copenhagen is, um, is located. Um, but uh, I've been working many places, uh, but um, my life has been concentrated mostly on this island, <laughs> uh, Schellen. Okay, and tell us that's, a little bit about is your that an Is that an answer to your question? That's a perfect answer to my question, okay. thank you. How about your uh, educational background? Can you tell us a little about uh, college and what you studied? Yeah, I'm, I'm an MSc, Master of, of uh, Science in Mechanical Engineering, and uh, uh, I have a PhD in Physics, uh, so that's my uh, professional background. Then I've been working for our Minister for Protection of the Environment, mainly with noise problems in aircraft, in uh, in airports uh, and roads and so on. So I've been fighting uh, noise uh, a lot of my time. Excellent. All right, now here's a question that I've, I, I noticed, uh, I'm trying to remember where I saw this, in, in one of, uh, maybe one of the, the little videos that they had of you. Um, on this show, uh, a, a couple of months back, we did an entire show on police stops of recumbents, especially velomobiles. And I happened to notice that there was a story from way back uh, in the 80s of, of, of police uh, stopping you in your velomobile. Do you recall that? Can you tell us about that? It was a photo. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that that uh, that small story had uh, come out, but I was. Uh, uh, it was my first uh, meeting with the police in Copenhagen. Um, I was riding in uh, in January. It was uh, it was cold, uh, minus ten degrees, and a lot of wind, and. Uh, uh, I saw a, a police car behind me, following me, um, and suddenly it, they came up and uh, put a hand out and uh, uh, stopped me. And uh, they started to explain uh, home to their station what they had caught here in the traffic. <laughs> um, um, peculiar uh, UFO. Uh, and I understand that the the station they said that they should confiscate, they should stop him uh, and immediately. Uh, and uh, I had to, I had not a coat on because I don't need a coat when I'm sitting under the the fairing. Uh, so I had to walk to the the station and take the train home. But uh, next day, I wrote a letter to our ministry, uh, asked them on which background they could do such a thing uh, against me. And I, I asked them uh, to give me a chance to, uh, to check the vehicle if, uh, if it was up to the law and rules in Denmark. Two days later, uh, I was working at the Technical University at that time. Two days later, a policeman came up to my office, uh, made a salute, and said, I have something for you. And uh, uh, I went uh, down uh, in the yard, and there was a big car, a big car, uh, with a, a load area with a crane yeah, also yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and my That's little true. lighter was standing on this uh, this car and he wanted to deliver it back to me with thanks for the loan he said <laughs> but uh, but uh, then the minister accepted that uh, they would take in a vehicle for test and uh, it passed this test and it is the only bicycle in Denmark which has been tested by the uh, ministry, and I have got a paper that it, it has passed the test. 
What a wonderful story. <laughs> I, I'm so glad I stumbled upon that. I, I just had to ask you about that. So, yes, yeah, so for all you uh, Velonauts out there who watched that previous show and think that this police stopping Velomobiles is a new thing, uh, I believe what it said was uh, 1982 on that. Uh, yeah, so once perfect. again, a pioneer in so many things, Carl, that's, uh, that's a very interesting story. All right, let's kind of wrap up the interview here. I want to... Um, want to ask about the future since you're only 82 and obviously a very young 82 uh, your plans uh, for the future um, I I'm, I'm gonna just guess you're gonna keep on writing um, how about any thoughts of retirement well the, I, uh, the lighter has only been made in uh, in uh, a very small number uh, and uh, I don't think I ever have made two exactly equal because uh, the demands, uh, the wishes from the customers, they are different. Uh, so uh, it's not only the size which has be, to be fitted to the person, but it's also uh, they want special uh, um, gears, special brakes, and uh, they want uh, to bring luggage. Uh, I have a musician who he wanted to make his uh, his um, music instrument with him uh, and uh, and uh, you saw a lady <laughs> wanted to make a dog with him other people want to make a baby or uh, a, a child with them so the um, the requirements are, are different uh, so a mass production that's a completely other item uh, I could imagine, for instance, that uh, a model like the uh, the elf, uh, I've seen uh, tendencies in the same direction in Europe now uh, to make uh, cheaper, uh, not so fast wheels, but uh, practical wheels. And uh, who knows, maybe China will come up with something. Uh, I know that China is now buying up uh, bike companies in Europe. Uh, in Copenhagen, they bought uh, not long ago one of our finest uh, bike design companies. So why do you think they do that? <laughs> yeah, they're on to something, I think, and that we may be hearing more from them. Thank you for, for that. So I guess, um, and how about, uh, how about Spetsy? So uh, I, uh, I missed you last year at Spetsy, and I, I caught up to you this year at Spetsy, uh, thankfully. Uh, do you continue to think you're going to be attending Spetsy every year? Uh, maybe not every year, but I will be back. Okay, that we'll look yep. forward to seeing you there. Okay, yep. and to, uh, to wrap it up then, um, what, what about any final thoughts you might have on, on all of this? We, we loved having you on the show. It's been so wonderful and formative uh, for everyone. Tell us, do you have any final thoughts on, on, uh, on today? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've seen um, uh, a perspective in an interesting uh, young engineers in designing wheelmobiles and I told you that I have had uh, see, fifth, about 15 uh, trainees in, in the Leiterer company from, from France and from Germany and from Austria, from Sweden uh, and um, some of them also uh, started their own company. So in this way I I'm glad to see that the idea is spreading. Um, a few will have success also to make uh, uh, bills in higher numbers. And uh, you really need many producers of bills in, in order really to uh, make an impact uh, in the traffic. Uh, you, say, you see very few uh, uh, until now, even in Holland, um, of course, when you write, uh, you make a tour in a big group, it looks very impressive. But in the daily use, uh, you see not very many yet. But uh, I hope in 10 years, uh, it's not a, an unusual sight to see billow beads uh, passing you 
every day. Carl, thank you so much. Um, I got to say that if your uh, prediction comes true and you do find that there's going to be uh, lots of Velomobiles in 10 years all over the place and the market expands, mm -hmm. I got to say, and I think most of us will agree, this is your legacy because mm -hmm. uh, after what we learned today, uh, you are a true pioneer. So mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much for taking the time, uh, riding over to, to Jim's place. Uh, I know this was not easy for you. Uh, so thanks for, for, for spending the time with us uh, and, and telling us so much uh, of what you know about the Velomobiles. And uh, maybe we'll have you back on again sometime. So uh, Carl, thank you so much for being with us. Maybe next busy. <laughs> and hopefully I'll see you at the next Betsy. So yeah. you guys are welcome to stay with us uh, if you like. I know it's getting late there in Copenhagen. So if you got to go uh, and, and drive home, I understand. So um, whatever you got to do. Thanks. And Jim, thank you too. I don't know if you're going to hang on or not. If you're not, thanks for uh, Jim Pratt is working with uh, with Carl there in Copenhagen. Uh, yep, there he goes. <laughs> Say hi, Jim. There you go. Look at us. We're on camera now. Yeah. There you go. And, uh, and uh, thanks for helping out on the chat. The chat's, been real, uh, the chat's been real active and Jim's been answering a lot of questions. So we appreciate that, guys. All right, let's move along. Uh, I think, um, I guess what I need from you, uh, Denny, is to come to my, uh, there we go, go come to uh, my laid back bike report scene here and I'm going to cover it here for uh, Brian uh, on the slideshow while Brian gives the news report. So can you uh, go to Brian first and then over to there. Can we do that? Brian and the laid back news report. There you go. Hey, how's it going? Uh, not a whole lot of news. The race busy building bikes. Uh, about the only news I have is, is semi related to that. Uh, if you are ordering cat trikes at the moment, I know a couple people were upset there. They used to have about a three week wait time. It's grown out to six weeks. That's just because honestly, they are selling more of the Dumonts and the road ARs than they expected to. So uh, that's been, um, uh, they've, their production slipped out a little bit. That'll get fixed. Don't worry about it. I'm sure they'll come down as the summer goes on. Uh, one thing I wanted to do is says this is not a whole lot of news. Um, I got a new interesting trike in, uh, built by a friend of the program, uh, Peter at the Bicycle Man, who also owns Linear, started a new trike company called Avenue, and their first model is called the First Av, which I think is kind of an appropriate and uh, witty name. Uh, it's uh, hopefully, maybe someday there'll be a 12th Av, who knows, but uh, their first model is kind of an entry-level model. Uh, it's 1495 bucks, which is pretty cheap for a trike. Some of the unique features about it, about it at that price range, it does have full ball bearing headsets. So the steering is a little lighter than uh, some of the other lower end trikes that, that don't have that. As you can see in this picture, especially if you can go back one, the, the photo before you can, I think this photo best illustrates it. It has a very unique trust frame. It's a, uh, the main frame is three pretty robust tubes, which uh, gives it a manufacturer claim 300 pound weight limit. I think that is extremely conservative. I'm pretty sure that frame could handle a hell of a lot more than that. I think the 300 pound weight limit is due to the wheels that are specced on it. I don't, uh, I think it's, it's a very tough uh, overbuilt bike. And if you know Pete, a lot of his stuff is very overbuilt. He does it, they have a full, um, system there at the factory well these are built overseas but at at the bicycle man they have a full stress tester they put these things through thousands of cycles before they're put out if if he says it can handle 300 pounds it can probably handle four it's a, it's a pretty overbuilt trike uh ride wise um handling's really good uh with the ball bearing headsets it's a little lighter uh, steering than like a rover or something like that the uh, high speed stability is pretty good it's got a higher seat height so it's not outstanding but it, it's it's very good for what it's intended for not a lot of brake steer or anything like that as you can see it has an adjustable boom can fit a wide range of riders manufacturer says 36 to 46 inches of x seam seats big and wide and comfortable uh, the, about the only downside i could really find to it is at my weight i only weigh about 190 and uh, on really rough roads, that overbuilt frame doesn't absorb a lot of bumps. So uh, how does it handle in the snow, Brian? Oh, that's not my picture. 
<laughs> so I'm not sure. No, that's uh, that's actually I stole these from when you're. I, I've ridden it, but every time I took it out to get photos, it was pouring. So these are manufacturer photos. You got to okay. ask Pete that, but but it does have a pretty short wheelbase. So somewhat related to that, uh, traction's really good. Uh, some of the longer wheelbase stuff with a 26 inch rear wheel, you, you get a little spinach when stuff gets slippery, but it actually the traction's pretty good. Great handling track, and you can't argue with the price, $14.95. And support from them is, I'm sure, going to be outstanding. They've been great with linear and everything else they did. But really cool trike and really eager to see it on the market. It's funny, I actually, I live fairly near Pete. I'm about an hour and a half away. And I was on trail the other day, and I saw a trike coming in their way, and I couldn't figure out what the heck it was. And then about two days later, Pete brought me the test trike, and I was like, oh, that's what I saw on the trail a couple days ago. So they are out and about and seem to be well received so far. It does come right now with you are able to get a rear rack and a rear fender and some uh, bottle mounts and stuff. They do have front fenders coming. They're not around yet, but it will eventually have the full suite of everything you need. And they've already had people touring on the prototypes and everything and nothing's broken so far. So really cool trike, especially if you're looking for something that you know is not gonna break. Okay. That sounds great. Uh, okay, uh, thanks, Brian. And if you want to go ahead and get uh, back to the slideshow, and I'm going to take over directing here. And Denny, are you on there? Let's uh, yeah. let's see your face. Turn yourself on. Okay, down. I am. Here we go. And I, I will. Uh, there we go. And Denny's going to give us the uh, sports report. I think he's got some interesting stuff. Uh, what do you got today, Denny? Well, first of all, the 2017 edition of the Race Across America, or RAM, is over. The lone finishing recumbent effort was the four-person mixed team of cruise bike, uh, 3,000 miles to a cure. Riders were Jim and Maria Parker, Larry Oslin, and Kevin Gamble. They completed the 3,070-mile race course in six days, 12 hours and 28 and 26 minutes. They finished first in a 50 to 59 four-person mixed division and placed third overall of the 22 four-person teams this year. A phenomenal effort considering the heat and the rough weather in the Midwest during the race. Cruise bikes 3,000 miles to a cure road to raise money for brain cancer research. You can still contribute to this worthy, worthy cause by visiting their website. Sergey Zimin, the venerable Russian, DNF'd early this year. He withdrew at the Congress time station. I've not heard why nor word if he will be back for an eighth attempt next year. I wouldn't count him out. Red Pearl Racing uh, made it to Durango, but were eight hours behind the soft cutoff. They decided that the time deficit was too, a bit too much to recover and called the race there. I had the pleasure of crewing for this hardworking team. While a DNF is not an easy decision, there is so much preparation and cost associated with a RAM attempt that it was probably the right choice. I'm pretty sure they will be back, if not for RAM, for at least RAW in the near future. Crewing or riding this team is always an epic experience, and I'm looking forward to the next one. In my opinion, the biggest story of RAM this year has not been given the exposure it deserves. It's re recumbent related, sort of, and I feel I must report on it. Andre Kalich, a hand cyclist in double amputee, uh, finished the solo race in 12 days, 16 hours, and 18 minutes, becoming not only the first solo hand cyclist to ever enter the grueling race, but the first to finish. Although he was the last finisher, he made it almost four hours before the cutoff. Additionally, what he and his crew were able to accomplish is truly amazing considering that over half of the field fail, failed to finish the solo field this year, failed to finish at all, including several past finishers. I understand it was an embedded film crew, so Andre's race and other endurance accomplishments will be made into a documentary. The working title is Joyrider, and I know I'm going to be looking for it. And more about it at, uh, more about Andre at uh, www.joyrider.com. Uh, next are a couple of upcoming coming ultra races. Uh, Jay's fat ass, I love that title. Uh, six and 12 hour race in Muhammad, uh, Illinois is a fun but fully sanctioned UMCA points race. This year, the six hour race is designated as the six hour UMCA championship. 
It's held on a fairly flat open course, so I expect there will be a good recumbent field this year. Uh, the championships always draw them. In uh, August, the Mid-Atlantic 112 24-hour race will return to Washington, North Carolina. This is a very flat race on a really nice part of the country. It features mostly quiet, flat farm country roads and it's one of my personal favorite races out there. This year the 100 mile race is designated as the UMCA 100 mile championship. The 100 mile field is one of the fastest in the country and perhaps the fastest I've ever witnessed. I expect several recumbents to contend for the win. The race takes place the weekend of August 19th. Finally, an update regarding mileage maven Amanda Coker. It's quite possibly she will finish the fastest to 100,000 mile record attempt in the next few days. If that happens, she will break a record that has stood for 78 years, held by Tommy Goodwin of 500 days in 1939. By almost three months, if everything goes right, and I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. Congratulations to Amanda, her mom, dad, and dad, who are their crew, and all of her friends, supporters, and sponsors. She is truly amazing. And that's it for this month. Uh, remember to stay on the bike. And keep moving forward. Back to you, Gary. Very good. Let me, uh, here we go. Thank you, Danny. Uh, very interesting report, especially since you were actually included in it for a bit as you crewed uh, for the uh, Red Pearl Racing Team, the ill-fated Red Pearl Racing Team this year. But we hope for better things from them in the future. Thanks for that great report, uh, Denny, if you want to grab the directorship there, and yep. um, we yep. are going to go then to the Google Plus uh, business and talk about uh, what's going on in the Google Plus community. Can we uh, go to the slides? There we go. Thank you. All right. So the Google Plus uh, bike riding community has 1,190 members uh, as of now, growing very nicely. Uh, you can take a look and see we've got members from all over the world. We have a little locator map. Uh, if we can get, Brian's probably trying to uh, the locator map. There we go. And um, if you're on the bike rider community on Google Plus, uh, we have um, a little uh, form for you to fill out. Tell us uh, where you are so you can find other riders that are close by. So please fill that out. All right, let's get to the contests of the month. Uh, we're going to start with the picture of the month. This is from Rob Leviston. It's called Out and About with My Velo, I thought appropriate enough, at uh, Lake Wenduri. A really pretty shot there, and I, um, I believe that is a velomobile that is made from chloroplast, so uh, no doubt a home-built one. Uh, the video of the month from uh, my friend uh, John Zangelin. Uh, Many of you might have seen the video that he uh, put out. He's got a little um, YouTube channel that's called My First Trike. And he, uh, I got a chance to ride with uh, John on a local uh, rail trail uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and he posted this video, Olentangy Trike Ride in Columbus. So uh, a great ride with uh, some really nice people. I hope, uh, hope you guys get a chance to do something like that routinely. Uh, and then the discussion of the month is uh, Damiana Day, how much work to put into an older bent to keep it on the road? And uh, Damiana has a, a relatively well-used uh, Delta trike that she tours around Australia and New Zealand, and uh, things wear out, as you can see from this picture. So I had a little discussion about uh, what, how much is it worth or how much uh, extra work is it worth to uh, keep those things on the road, I guess, versus... Um, getting a new one, so. And of course, our friend, uh, Pilius Pulcher, the post of the month. Honestly, you know, I, I really try to find pictures that have uh, recumbents in them. I, I don't want to just uh, do uh, ride pictures because it's important, this is what we do. But honestly, that is such an amazing shot there. Monday morning and evening ride right there. And then, uh, of course, I am going to do one with uh, his uh, particular bent. If we go to the next slide, you're going to see, uh, from that same ride that he had. There's, we don't see too many pictures with Pileus in it. There's one with his flux uh, recumbent. So uh, once again, uh, great shots. Thank you, congratulations to all our winners. And um, now we're gonna move on to, uh, to our closing. So if you wanna uh, come back to me for a second. Um, 
Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to talk about what's coming up. I uh, usually just talk, tease the next uh, the next show, but we've got some really exciting stuff coming up and something unusual. Uh, we're going to have a show next Sunday that just kind of came up. So I'll be posting all the information on social media. But if um, you want to go to that next, uh, uh, Brian, can you uh, first of all put up that slide of Matt? If uh, hopefully that's in there. That's it. Uh, and go ahead, uh, Danny, if you could hit that and we'll go through our what's what we got coming up. So next Sunday, that'll be July 16th. I'm very excited to have uh, scored an interview with uh, the Jayo World Tour guy, Matt Galat. Uh, Matt is a uh, is a guy originally from Detroit, but he's actually now an expat lives in Ningbo, China. And I know I have to know that many of you guys follow him. He's a very interesting guy. Um, he has uh, had two ab aborted world tours, with, which uh, were cut off for various reasons, and now uh, seems to be doing well on his third. He's uh, most recently been in Japan. He plans to go all around the world on this HP Velotechnic uh, trike. Um, Matt is an amazing videographer. Uh, he does, a, va he does a, a daily vlog of his life, actually whether he's riding or not, but now it's all about his riding pretty much. He's coming to the U.S. for a, a, a two or three weeks here uh, next week, and that's how I was able to uh, get this interview with him. So um, if you want to see some breathtaking videos, uh, especially his drone shots, he brings a drone along with him, and you'll see shots of him from way overhead riding along in beautiful scenery. So. I, my words do not do this justice. So look, uh, look up on YouTube, Ja Yo, uh, J O Y O E. I will have the link in the description. Of course, you can get an idea ahead of time then, uh, and join us if you will uh, next Sunday, July sixteenth at two p.m. We're going to do a live interview with Matt, and it will just be an interview show. We won't have all the extra reports in there, and I think you'll find it fascinating. Uh, then on August 13th, back to our regularly scheduled shows, if we can get the uh, next slide up there. Maybe. There we go. There's, a, there's another pioneer uh, guy. This is Tim Brummer uh, uh, from Lightning Cycles. Uh, Tim has been around for a very long time in the recumbent world, and his lightning bicycles are... Uh, our winners uh, uh, in racing and in everyday riding, people love them. So uh, Tim is uh, originally a rocket scientist and uh, turned into a recumbent uh, design guy. So uh, we're going to talk to Tim. I'm sure we're going to have a fascinating conversation about uh, what has gone into the lightning and what uh, his racing past has been. So we hope you'll join us. That will be a full-fledged show. And join us on the chat uh, August 13th at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. And then I wanted to give a little heads up on this uh, on this uh, next show. It will be in September, and it is Anna Mitchell. Uh, Anna contacted me uh, a few weeks back. Uh, she is an author and a very interesting lady. Um, she is an Australian uh, who has written this book, Fat Chick Goes AWOL, uh, 2,600 Miles in an Armchair on Wheels. She knew nothing about riding. She knew nothing about recumbents. She knew nothing about trikes and just knew she wanted to change her life. So I guess what I'm suggesting here is if, uh, and I'll put the link in the description, if you have a chance, uh, get to Amazon and download uh, her book. It's about 10 bucks, uh, really worth the money. It's a great read and really uh, interesting take on uh, someone who, uh, who started out uh, completely ignorant of what goes on and turned into, uh, which turned into a, a love for recumbent riding. So um, she has uh, won awards. She just won the 2017 Independent Publisher Book Award for Best First Book Nonfiction. And like I said, it's avail available on Amazon. I will put that link in there. And we're gonna start uh, this show a little later. Uh, this is September 17th at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's because she will be in Australia, um, I think in the Perth area, if I'm not mistaken. So as we did for Ian Sims, uh, we don't want to do an interview with them in the middle of the night. I think that gets her to about 6 in the morning. So we really appreciate that. Anna Mitchell, don't miss the show, September 17th. All right. Um, we're going to go on to the next slide, if we could, guys. I want to talk about uh, a little bit more specifically about that description section of our video. Uh, I think back up one, Brian, maybe. 
there's a picture. Yeah, there we go. I want to show you guys that it's not real clear, but you can get the idea. If you look on YouTube, we have that clickable table of contents over there where after the show, I go back and break it down so that you can watch specific se sections of the show uh, and you don't have to watch the whole thing at once. You can go and, and, and take little bite-sized pieces or watch just the parts that you want. And then below that, we have all the links that we mentioned in the show. I'll go through the whole show and I will put in there all the links so that you can find everything that we've talked about and find all the people uh, that are on the show. So please take advantage of that. I think it, I think it makes the, uh, the long shows that we do now a little bit more workable. Okay, uh, I want to go and, and thank those uh, guys that have been with us today and uh, have contributed so much. Let's, uh, let's start with uh, Brian. Uh, can you uh, try to get yourself back on? I'm just going to, uh, you'll just hear my lovely right. voice. How about yes. that? Well, we, we, we miss your face, but uh, we thank you no, so you much, don't. Brian. <laughs> Brian, thanks uh, for everything that you do uh, and, and for your support. I'm Bent Ryder. Uh, we, we so appreciate that. It's great working with you as always. And, uh, and I hope your tennis game continues to improve. We'll see. Thank you. Okay, I, I thank rushed in here from playing tennis. That's why he said that. That is why I said that. All right. Uh, Denny, why don't you go ahead and put yourself on there if you can. And I will thank you for doing the directing today. A, a great job. And the sports report, you got completely through it. I just think this is a, a red letter day. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, don't, we own, we're not old, not done yet, Gary. Not uh, quite done yet, yet, but I'm going to yeah, thank yeah. you ahead of time. Yeah. If the, yeah. Show, if the show goes all to hell right now, you know, you've at least got your thanks. So thanks, Dan. <laughs> thank you. Ben. All right. Let's, uh, let's shoot on over to Doug. Doug, thank you so much for uh, participating and helping me out. Uh, it's great to have you from Dallas. Um, if you want to give us a second here on, uh, on your, your, tell us a, a little bit about uh, your, your Velomobile collection that we saw in the pictures and what you plan to do on the Velomobile in the next year. Give me about, a, give me about 30 seconds. Sure, Gary. I've actually have four now. They're the four, I'd say, more popular ones out there. Uh, I just acquired a DF and uh, have just started riding it. Uh, it's very fast, enjoying it. Uh, I plan on doing a cross country here very soon with the Pack Tour folks. That'll be the first time they've ever had a Velo. And so that'll be fun. And then uh, hopefully working toward the Trans Am race next year. That's the goal. Super. And, and Doug, so if people want to find out more about what you do, uh, what, Bent Rider, where's the best place to, uh, to see what you're doing? Uh, Dallas Cyclist on, the fa on Facebook. Just look up Dallas Cyclist. Dallas Cyclist. Okay. I'll get that link in there too. Thanks a lot, Doug. Yeah, yeah go ahead. You had something else? Uh, I don't want to oh, I was going to say, it's just, it's plastered all over the side of the bicycle. So it's pretty easy to find. I've, I've seen that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a bunch, Doug. All right. And to Joseph, if we can. There we go. And there we are. Joseph, uh, what a pleasure to always have you on with us. You're, you're so knowledgeable and, uh, and have so much uh, to contribute. We, we always appreciate that. Tell us a, a little bit, uh, the, again, if you give us about 30 seconds about your upcoming tour. I guess it's too late to, to jump in on that now, but how about uh, yeah. what, where you're going to be and how we can follow it? Well, we're going to be 21 riders. Um, and we will be, uh, I think we will be publishing our, our daily um, news and pictures and, uh, you know, uh, ride reports from riders um, on the German Velomobile uh, Forum. Um, it, I'll, I'll talk to uh, the English-speaking uh, folks if they want to do a similar thing on Band Rider Online, which I did um, on um, the Rollover America Tour. Um, so that we actually are on both um, of the most used platforms for Velomobile riders. Um, you will be able to, uh, uh, to follow us. Yeah, just go on threewheelsforfrance.eu, um, uh, which is the website, and it has a precise schedule there. You will be able to, to see us uh, on every day where we are. Um, and um, Tune in on the on these platforms, and you will get daily updates from the road. Excellent. Okay, thank you, Joseph, so much, and uh, I know we'll see you again soon. And good luck on the uh, tour. I hope you have a great time. Thanks, Gary. All right. Okay, let's see. Back to me, if you would, uh, Dan. <clears throat> and I'm going to talk. Uh, give a, a shout out here. Uh, most of you probably noticed that we haven't seen Carl Kidd uh, for a couple of months. 
Carl is really battling a very serious health issue. We want to give him a shout out. Carl, we miss you. We hope you return soon. We wish you all the best. Uh, so thanks. Uh, uh, for any of you out there, we uh, hope you'll be thinking of Carl. Um, and I wanted to talk next about uh, this July edition of the Adventure Cyclist magazine. Uh, there we go. And uh, on the bottom here, you can see it says laid back boom. Well, uh, it is a, a laid back issue. So once in a while, Adventure Cyclist magazine puts out a um, puts out an interesting uh, uh, issue and has uh, some uh, bent writing uh, uh, information in it. So there was an interesting article called Laid Back Boom uh, by, uh, by Mark Sani. And there's a, another interesting article in there, which turns out to be a review of the Terratrike Rambler Evo, the new uh, electric version of the Terratrike uh, Rambler, which uh, Brian has uh, reviewed. So, and it's it's Brian's article. Brian, uh, do you have a second to uh, tell us about uh, about that article and and your association? I, I, I with was that? I was just going to ask if you could flip to the article. I haven't seen it yet. I don't even have a copy of that yet. They didn't mail me one. I got, right. my, I got my paycheck. I didn't, even, I didn't get the magazine. <laughs> well, then that's all that really counts. No, uh, but no, it's great working with adventure cyclists. They do this once a year, and they always ask me to write something for it, you know, sometimes a couple things. So I always like working with them. They're, they're great. And they've told me just over the years, you know, everybody stops in. It's kind of one of those stops on the Trans Am route that you stop by their headquarters. So there's a laid-back boom article. Uh, and, and then they have a nice section also about um, uh, uh, links to all the different manufacturers. Yeah, they do that, uh, they do that once a year, yeah, with that. It's and cool. but, uh, they include uh, resources. Uh, they really are market. very, like, they always very say, nice. like, everybody that stops at the fa at the, uh, the headquarters every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, and in number. fact, that's right. And there's uh, there's a, there we go, sorry. Yeah. There's a trike rider that stopped in there. The resources have all the, like I say, different uh, different links to various places. Uh, I, I was actually kidding about showing the article, Gary, but I really appreciate you playing along. Well, I want to I want to <laughs> find it. I think it was left actually out of mine. Oh, um, yeah, it's, it makes sense. And, oh, uh, no, they are really cool to work with, and, and I'm glad they do that every year. And I'm sure they'll continue to keep doing it. And, hey. Folks, there it is. There's my there it is. name. And, yeah. uh, and that's and, a really cool trike. We're, I'm going to have the review of that on Bent Rider. Um, next week i always once they put the the Brian thing out, i give them a couple of uh give them a couple of weeks to have it for their exclusive because they pay me to write it so and then i'll, I'll put it up on our site in a probably some wednesday thursday something like that really okay. cool track though it is and it was a, it was a really good it was a good review brian i'm not just saying that well i'm just saying it but uh, it was a really good that's review right. okay so uh Okay, uh, that's going to pretty much wrap it up. I want to talk to you just for uh, the last couple of seconds about how you can support us uh, uh, for uh, the Layback Bike Report. You can support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. So uh, the links uh, there, uh, go to our YouTube channel, click the uh, subscribe button uh, in the, the lower uh, right-hand corner. And when you're there, there's a little bell on the subscribe thing. It will give you a notification when we go live. So uh, you can do that and not miss another show. Um, you can also uh, jump on that little uh, white uh, eye that's there and find out more information at our website. And uh, like us on the Facebook page. Um, we have Layback Bike Report Facebook page, so like us there. Now, back to the website. Let's go ahead and get that uh, graphic up if we can. I'm going to talk to you about what you'll see there. If you hit that little white eye, uh, you're going to go to our website. And you're going to see all our sponsors at the top of the page, which uh, we will ask you to please support them. Uh, they make everything that we do possible, from all our trips to uh, helping with the equipment that we have purchased so that we can give you the best possible event coverage and, and do our best uh, show. So please support our sponsors. Uh, you're going to find uh, our most recent show, uh, a link to that and what's going on with that. You're going to find our upcoming shows, and right below that, a calendar of future dates. You can go on and, and see uh, see on the calendar where, what things are coming up. You can sign up for our mailing list on that front page. Uh, you'll get the latest updates uh, emailed uh, to you, and uh, if anything goes wrong or there's any changes at the last minute, I can get to you on that, which happened today, for most of you probably know. Um, you're going to find a page that uh, you can see there called Past Shows. And that's exactly what it is. You can see a listing of our past shows, and they will have 
the live chat archive in them. So all the wonderful live chatting that's been going on today, I'm going to archive that. You'll be able to, if you're watching this later on, you're going to be able to see what people were talking about. And, uh, and that's, that's kind of interesting to watch. You also find a bonus page um, there and it's got uh, videos and things that we can't uh, get onto the show and and all the images that we uh, that we have on the show I put there in in the folders you'll be able to go ahead and look at that now if you can move on to the next slide you're going to see a picture of our buddy Larry Varney uh, who hopefully will be back with us uh, next time and he's wearing one of those great laid back bike report hats uh, which are uh, traveling all over the world these days. Uh, so we hope you will buy a hat to help support us. It's 20 bucks, five bucks shipping and handling. So all of that you can find uh, at our website. Okay, you want back to me, Danny, if you would. And uh, that is not me, but let's go ahead and get me. There we go. So, folks, uh, I appreciate you staying with us today. I hope you enjoyed the show today. We had a great time. So, until our next webcast from all of us here at the Laidback Bike Report, so long, Bent Riders.